What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. Inside this black mystery box is my very first Prusa 3D printer. That's right, it's the new Prusa Mini. I'm gonna get this unboxed and give you guys my initial impressions on this 3D printer. Let's check it out. All right, and here it is, the Prusa Mini all assembled, and I've even run off and 3D printed a handful of objects here over the past few days. Again, this is not a full review, it's just an initial look at the 3D printer. So let's take a look at some of the specs for this machine. All right, so let's start off by talking about the price. The machine retails for $350. It is a kit and it only takes about 20 to 30 minutes to assemble. I was extremely excited to see that it was not a super detailed, long, painful process for the assembly. Most of it comes pre-assembled and then it's just a matter of screwing in a handful of different bolts. There is an like a crazy detailed instruction manual that comes with this machine. I assumed that it was like, oh, it's an assembly manual and it's gonna be like three pages in one language and then another three, you know, dozens and dozens of, no, no, no. This is one big booklet for me, all in English here, and there's one whole part portion of this is just the actual assembly. The other is a 3D printing handbook that are all sorts of tips and tricks and troubleshooting techniques for the actual printer, which is something I've never seen with any other 3D printer that I've ever worked with. And again, I know this is sort of the standard for the Prusas, and again, this is my first time ever really interacting with one of these machines. A lot of the components are also 3D printed, which I'm assuming helps them keep down the costs for these machines. Also, it opens up the door if some of these parts need to ever be replaced, or if I wanted to maybe upgrade them or just swap them out for something in a different color, I could potentially 3D print all of these other components, which is really, really cool. Uh, one of the things I have not mentioned yet is the build volume. It has a squared build volume of 178 millimeters by 178 by 178, or about seven inches all around. So not a bad size for this machine. And it's designed to be, again, a, a much smaller machine. It's the mini. One thing that I was really concerned with about even pre-ordering this was that there's no other side panel here to support the machine. Most other 3D printers, you don't see this hanging look to the printer. And uh, I'm sure there's a term for this, but I, I don't know what it is, but it actually is really, really stable and really sturdy. And I'm sure the folks over at Prusa would not have released this otherwise, because the prints that I'm getting out of this, the quality is really nice for this small frame and this design that they've compiled here. So it's it's really, really impressive. And not to mention the display here, it's not touchscreen. Um, I you know was secretly hoping after one of the last printers that I unboxed and, and looked at had a nice touch screen. A little, little disappointed that it didn't have touch screen, but the user interface and the click through functions on this are really, really tight and it seems to work pretty dang well. There's a few little things in there that I wish would change, like you could actually stop a function where it says there's a stop, but you can't actually click on it. Some of those things I, I think maybe, you know, with future updates, some of those will, will tweak and change. But overall, I'm just getting some really great prints off this machine. One thing that I did not mention is it also comes with a magnetic build plate and it also has auto mesh bed leveling. So it's sort of like a, an auto bed leveling function here on the printer. So for 350 bucks, having auto bed leveling these magnetic build plates, these flex plates here that has a PIE coating on it is pretty dang impressive. And so far, it's this is super sturdy, have like really easy to align, by the way, the magnets, how they've set that up compared to some of the other magnetic build plates that I've worked with. So this is again, really, really cool. I also opted in and bought a roll of PLA, this blue PLA from Prusa, their Prusa Mint filament there with my order, as well as one of the other optional build plates, which is uh, a textured build plate. Give me a second. Which is this steel bed plate here. So it's got a little bit of a texture to it. Uh, so if you wanted something that wasn't maybe as smooth of a finish 
when uh, on the print surface, you could go with this upgraded metal sheet. I ordered it, I, just, I wasn't sure which one I was gonna like better. Honestly, I really like the PEI sheet that comes with the printer. One other thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, they're known for sending out some hair bows and I have not opened this bag and I can't even get the bag open. What's going on here? There we go. Let me let me break from my, my keto regimen and have some very sweet and tasty Haribo gummy bears as I drop them on the ground. Both the hot end and the build plate heat up extremely fast. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this thing is also super quiet when it is printing as well. So I was very excited to see that. I mean, coming off of the Phenom, which is the loudest 3D printer that I've worked with, to the quietest 3D printer that I've ever worked with, it's it's been quite a, uh, a, a shift and change there. And again, I'm getting some stupidly nice prints off of this machine, and we'll talk about the prints here in just two seconds. Uh, but one of the other things that I really wanted to call out that I loved, absolutely loved, that they were doing with this kit, and I don't know if it's the same with all of their other units or not, but the packing materials, first of all, it's packed very nice. I feel very confident now this is gonna be shipped out to me and not getting a lot of damage or anything like that, but it really barely uses any styrofoam in their packing materials. Everything's packed in there with cardboard and really nicely laid out. Uh, it's just, it's a really nice change of pace compared to damn near every other 3D printer that has ever come across my hands has been packed in heavy duty styrofoam and it's horrible for the environment and I hate having to deal with that here in my place and trying to throw that out and it's painful and I'd much rather deal with, uh, you know, really nice packing like they've done here with all of their cardboard. So, so bravo on that front, you guys. All right, so let's talk about some of these prints. Uh, by the way, there is a ton of pre-loaded files for you to print as test prints here that come with the printer. One of those happens to be this bolt and screw. So I printed this using the test spool or test uh, filament, the Galaxy color, uh, sparkly Galaxy looking color PLA, and then the blue PLA that I ended up buying. And I ended up getting a print line issue where it looked like it skipped a line here. I really haven't seen that in any of my other prints, so I'm not quite sure what went on there. It might've been that the, the bed or the print might've came loose. Again, I'm not entirely sure what the deal was with that. And again, I haven't really seen that in any of the other prints. I also printed these gift box puzzle boxes. These are a holiday staple around here. I love giving these away as gifts, especially to any teens that are out there because you can stick cash money in there and that makes them work at it. And the detail, and again, it's so smoothly printed here at 0.2 millimeter layer height. And I printed this and sliced it on the Prusa slicer. So I also tried using some of the filamentum PLA that I had on hand and uh, this uh, this was the frog file that I was trying to print previously that I was running into some issues with, and I'll again talk about that here in just a few minutes. But uh, yeah, again, I think it for the most part where it wasn't completely screwing up and warping off the bed, printed nicely, the details printed on it pretty nice. Uh, this was before I figured out that I needed to further level the bed and make it a little bit tighter on the actual print lines when I'm getting up and printing. And after that, it was everything was printing smoothly. So with the remaining sample of white PLA that I had, I went off and printed a Benchy, which might be the absolute cleanest and nicest looking Benchy that I've ever printed right out the bat on a brand new machine. And then I also printed a whistle. <laughs> So again, I, all of these are files that are included on the SD card and they must run through these multiple times because they are so clean in their prints. So one of the main things that I was interested in using my Prusa Mini for is my Etsy orders. I sell these mini controller steering wheel adapters over on Etsy. If you haven't seen those already, I'll link down below to that. But it's uh, yeah, the, the, the quality of the print on this, I was very, very excited about. This might be the cleanest version of this that I've ever printed where the alignment, where the actual steering wheel moves is so smooth. I can't quite describe how smooth it is without giving you hands-on with it to feel just how smooth the back and forth motion of the two printed parts 
on top of each other are. Very, very impressed with this right here. So automatically doing what it was designed for for me. I also went off and ordered some of their Pet G and received that through Amazon and printed here is Fotis Mints Yoda printed in Pet G, kind of overkill for Pet G with this, I think. But again, it looks pretty good at uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height, but I probably could have honestly gone a little bit lower and gotten better results on this one. Also broke out my Pet G and printed this Mandalorian blaster. This was printed in multiple parts in two different print jobs on the bed. And yeah, it turned out great. This was all sliced in Prusa Slicer. I did need to tweak the support settings after this because it was damn near impossible to remove some of the supports from these prints. And I also printed this rogue bust file from David Eastman. This is his newest print file that he has available over off of his Patreon. And at no surprise here, it turned out really, really nice. Uh, this was printed at 0.15 millimeters. And yeah, the details again are super, super clean on this print. And I can see why so many people love printing on these Prusa machines just because uh, I mean, the quality of the prints are outstanding, absolutely outstanding. All right, so jumping in real quick into this video. Apologies, I do have a big cold right now. This was a, uh, it has been probably a few days since I actually recorded the video and I wanted to give you guys a quick update. I am not able to print whatsoever at this point with the machine. The bed leveling mechanism no longer is working or at least that's what support believes is the issue. I reached out to them through uh, their support chat section, talked through and explained the issues that I'm having where I can no longer lower the bed whatsoever. The only way that I can lower the bed is by manually lowering the bed, by spinning the, the, the piece over here. It's not recognizing this through the calibration function and it's trying to calibrate mid air. So they're gonna be sending me a new probe for the mini. I also posted about this over on the Facebook group before I heard back from support. And it sounds like there are also a few other mini owners experiencing the same issue as well. So uh, hopefully this isn't something that, you know, is on a majority of the machines. Again, it's a, it's a brand new machine. So I'm assuming they're gonna be working through some of the uh, quality issues before it gets, you know, fully, fully sorted here. All right, so yet another update on the Prusa mini saga of issues here, but uh, it was the probe for sure. And more specifically, it's the zip tie that was holding the probe in place and the cables here. A user over on the Facebook group recommended removing that and reattaching the zip cable. And as soon as I snipped that zip cable off, everything homed correctly, everything was able to mesh bed correctly. And as you can see here, I was able to run off and uh, print something here overnight. So this was very exciting. I was able to get this up and running here. Um, so again, if anybody's running into issues with their bed leveling not working, it might be that the zip tie is way too tight on the machine. So I'm gonna put in another zip tie through the opening there and secure this in place. But for the moment, everything is printing as it should be. I was down for more than a few days here to say the least, but very excited to have this back up and printing. All right, so while I'm getting really great prints off of this machine and the assembly process was really simple, I have had a number of different issues, just a variety of different issues with this machine, most of which I had been able to actually work through with uh, not a whole lot of effort, but I did wanna just, again, call that out to anybody that is interested in this machine. Uh, the first one is I did randomly get a watch dog error message. I'm not really sure what exactly that was. Uh, posted about it over on Facebook. I also might have pinged Joe Spruza on the Twitters. Uh, sorry, Joseph. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I basically ended up unplugging everything, replugging it back in and did not run into that error uh, any further, which was great. I also ran into a few thermal runaway issues as well on this that I, again, unplugged everything and replugged in all of the wires and that seemed to address it. And I haven't seen that, uh, haven't seen that since. So I don't know if those were interconnected by any means. Uh, in terms of the bed leveling, again, there is there is a auto bed leveling feature in here and there's actually a wizard that they have built in here not a you know a wizard that's gonna do things but there is some magic that it will walk you through the steps of getting it level the way that it should be so again I that was more on me in terms of just needing to further a 
adjust and refine that. I didn't want to screw up this bed more than anything after jacking up another bed here recently. Uh, one of the other random issues that kept occurring, I think it happened two or three times with this frog file before it eventually printed, was this is a file that came preloaded on the machine. Every time I went to go run that file, it would start the print, it would start auto leveling here, and then jump to 100% completed, which was super odd, super odd. So, and then it would, uh, I'd have to back out of it and then uh, start it up again and it would go, I have to wait a few minutes for it to start through the process. And then it would again, jump to 100% completed. And then I think it was, I shut off the machine, turned it back on, did it again, and it worked just fine after that. And again, I, I haven't run into that one since, but it was just a, something a little wonky. It just didn't seem like, I, I don't know. My Again, my expectations for this machine are maybe a lot higher than a lot of the other machines just because of the uh, like the huge number of awards that they're continually getting for all of their machines and uh, again it's it's really nice build quality of this is really nice but uh, some of these issues I wasn't expecting the other one that I'm probably less annoyed with any of the other technical issues is on the bottom of the control box on the back of the machine, I'll get a different camera angle here. There are screws on the under bottom of that that scratch the guy out of my workbench table here. This thing is like not even that old. I just got this for recording and it scratched the living crap out of the top of this table. <laughs> so what I'm be doing is taking some extra foam and inserting it on the bottom of this panel. The problem is this sits completely flush with the rest of the printer. So I feel like I'm gonna have to offset this by adding more foam to the other areas just to keep this level. Uh, yeah, so hopefully, I've, I've already reported that to Joseph and, and their team. So hopefully that gets adjusted or something is done because I, if I was a parent and got this for my kids and they were doing this on our kitchen table and it scratched, got these nice deep scratches on my kitchen table, I would be pissed. I'm already annoyed as it is for this, but I knew that was gonna happen at some point here with all the stuff that I'm doing on this table since it's not really a workbench, it's more of a video recording bench than anything. So issues aside, I, again, I do think that this is a pretty, dang good machine. And again, it's the very first set of these that have rolled off the production line and gone out to consumers. So I'm expecting some tweaks to be made. And I know the folks over at Prusa are really vigilant about taking in the feedback and they're constantly cranking out new firmware updates and, and or even print add-ons as options for these machines. So I'm very confident in my purchase with these guys and confident that some of the issues that might be occurring are gonna get addressed. Uh, or will get addressed for future buyers of printers. And again, if you're in the market for a smaller 3D printer that prints really great things and is honestly pretty easy to use, I mean, this is a great option for you. Again, this is really gonna end up being my dedicated Etsy printing order machine, and I'm sure I'll be doing other projects on it, but just the print quality on this is so, Dang nice. It's really, really great to see. And again, I think it helps justify that $350 price point that they're charging there for this. And again, it's got some really great features like the flex plate. It heats up super fast. It's really dang quiet. And it has auto bed leveling, which is a ridiculously cool feature in itself. So if you're interested in the Prusa Mini, I'll have links down below to where you can check that out. I'll also have links to all of the files here that I showcased in the video, other than the ones that were preloaded here on the SD card. And I'll probably be doing some follow-ups videos here on this machine in the upcoming weeks and months, and I'm sure I'll be printing some more crazy stuff on this here. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Bye now. I'm really excited how well this thing prints PET G. I'm gonna have to start printing more with this just because I know it's a lot more durable than PLA is, and I've forever in a day only really ever printed with PLA. So this is pretty cool, and I'm just, again, loving the results on this little monster of a machine. <laughs>